I'm not saying who it's gonna be. But somebody gonna be pissed. <laughs> Welcome back to the podcast, guys. We haven't done this in a hot minute. Because How many hot minutes has it been? We only do one a month. I know, and we only miss two. So it's been three months. This is it's been two months. So we haven't podcast since last quarter. Fairly accurate. I'm trying to make it sound as long as terrible well, as possible. Well, you've been busy. I've been busy, and I think we've decided we really only want to do these in person because doing them over Zoom calls sucks. He thinks a lot of things he decides, and then he puts my my two cents on there. Are you you were the first one to say that it sucked, and I just agreed with you. Yeah, that's true. I didn't mean I wasn't going to do it. I do all kinds of things that suck on a regular basis. <laughs> well, I, I figured <laughs> since you didn't ever reach out to me and say, hey, we're going to do one, or when I reached out to you and you just kind of like ignored me, that it meant that. <laughs> it, it, did it make you a little bit sad? No, because I don't like doing them over Zoom. No, I don't either, but it made me a little bit sad. I was like, I'm not calling Brian, but... He's not calling me either. <laughs> I don't like doing them over Zoom, and if you don't have the the uh, the want to do them over Zoom either, then it doesn't make me want to do that anymore. If you're like, no, we should still do it. We really should still do it over Zoom. Then I'd be like, okay, you're right. Let's ask the listeners. Do you guys want us to do it in Zoom, or should we only do it when we enjoy it? You know what the answer to that is. I think the answer to that is Brian doesn't care what you guys think. <laughs> Let's crack this open. Yeah, we got a <laughs> couple of whiskey sponsors tonight. Uh, we always have a drink sponsor for every episode we do. And going forward, we'd maybe like to have a location sponsor for every episode we do. Possibly. We're, we're working on uh, a little bit of a long-term sponsor. I don't want to say anything prematurely. But no, yeah, don't say it yet. I'm excited about it. Yeah, me too. So our first uh, whiskey here is Laws. Actually, I've heard a lot of good stuff about this from multiple people. Um, this is from Jason Bigler at Morse Considering Mythology. the source, that looks very promising. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Jason is this is his third time sponsoring the drink sponsorship uh, for the for the uh, Searchables now let's see, podcast. For those of you guys that remember, let me see if I remember because I'll be really impressed if I do. The first one I think was either our very first or second podcast ever. We were at your place in downstairs, Pittsburgh. Downstairs, and Brian Gundy was quietly listening and not making a peep. Right? Was that our first one? That was, first that was the fir- no. That was the first time that we had uh, Jason sponsor. With no, the I'm drink. saying it was either episode number one or two. Oh, my memory's not that good. That was, and it was awful. It was like this. Clear, not the podcast, the whiskey. I don't remember the podcast. Might have been awful too, but the whiskey was memorably awful. Yeah, it was really <laughs> bad. It was it was white dog. It, it hadn't been put in a barrel at all. So it was just <clears> raw it, spirit. It just tasted like. Fire rubbing water. alcohol. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And then the second one, he's like, I'm going to make up for it. And he, he got, got us. A few different things. but there was It was fluver. actually, there was people who enjoyed them, but neither of us did. Yeah. And they were like mulberry. Huckleberry. Huckleberry bourbon. Huckleberry yeah, bourbon. Cool. from Montana. He's trying to bring Montana. us some f- stuff from his home state. Which is cool. I appreciate your attempts, Mr. Bigler. Yeah. And he did actually bring some other stuff from the home state that we tried the other night in the worst hotel room I've ever stayed in my life. Yeah. Minus the uh, well, there was it's a, it's on par for another hotel room I stayed in that was as bad, but not because of the uh, the room. So the, the room was bad. Uh, it was sorry, I've got distracted because you're telling Thomas to be quiet with silent emotions. <laughs> sorry, <guys>. so <laughs> so we um, I stayed in a hotel room uh, in Turlock one time when I was working up at Freedom Breeder, and it was like a, a Motel 6 or something, or just a really inexpensive hotel right by the freeway. And the entire night, there's like crack deals going on inside and like um, low grade uh, prostitution, like having the entire night you all paid the parking by the lot. hour. I just I brought all my stuff inside from the car. <laughs> <laughs> and so it could be in the room with me just in case. And the lights, and they never turned the lights out in the whole like little section. So it was like this, just bright out there the whole time. So it was like I don't know. Anyway, there's that spot, and then there's a spot I stayed with Jason down the street from Reptarium. <laughs> oh, you know what? I've I've stayed at a couple of those places down from the Reptarium, and they're not so good. Nights in, and it, the activity outside wasn't so bad. I mean, there's a couple things, you know, maybe some people living around, but, um, but it was the walls were like nasty like there was literally like you didn't have to look too close and there was just like brown black like a multicolored n- non uh abstractive colors of whatever dripping off the wall like 
every wall. Every Gross. wall had like stuff dripping on it. Like the bed had stuff on it. Like it was just disgusting. Oh, that's pretty gross. But he brought some Montana whiskey that was pretty good. But then he also brought this, which is from Denver. It's laws. Four grain straight bourbon. There you it's go. Cask strength. Ooh, nice one. Yeah, not too shabby. All right, eh? Mr. Bigler. You have a chance to redeem yourself here. Yeah. Yeah, after the hotel stay. Pretty funny. You know, the funny thing about Jason, he's like such a nice guy, and he'll do anything for anybody. And every time he tries to do something nice, he does something he's horribly ashamed of. <laughs> I remember he came out. He actually helped me build that booth. Cheers. Right. Yeah, cheers, bro. Good to and, see you. And, uh, yeah, you too. And he was using my chop saw to hack down some wood, and I was like, he's probably got it. He's like Mr. DIY on YouTube, you know? And the first thing he does, like, lays my tape measure out on top of the piece of wood he's cutting yeah, he on the told chop me about saw. That. And then he told me he shipped you a new tape measure yes. in a snake box to yes. your, like, your P.O. box. And oh, that was mean. Yeah, and he didn't know. Then this, so, like, your P.O. people were, like, all, like, freaked out. Like, there's I a snake I was freaked here. out because we get shipped snakes all the time. But this uh, one was, like, no signature. It was the, the full, like, you know, ship your reptiles, live animal box type of deal. And, uh... Yeah, but I was New like, how measure. long has this been here? Yeah, <laughs> he paid a lot extra just to get that shipped. I will say, yeah, he did. Uh, he has this this motto that he was telling me. He said it to me several times on this trip, which was, "You don't come to the party empty-handed." Is was his motto. So he brought. So he like brought gifts for everybody. He had gifts for Brian and Lori at the Reptarium. He had gifts for me. He had gifts for you. He had. He, his idea for USR I thought was pretty cool. You know, he 3D printed oh, that, that big was, old Pikachu. Yeah, it was really cool. And it, was, it has its longevity. It's like one of those bring it back in and do it again next yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, like the staff at Daytona. He printed a giant piggy bank out of a Pokemon, but but then he put in the work to like walk around and get donations. Yeah. Big old now, how much bank. did that end up going for? Do you remember um, at the auction? It was, I think maybe a couple, a couple. I think at least two grand. I think yeah. Bob Vu won it for two grand. I wonder how much money was in it because it well could have had two grand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I know I contributed. Then that's so. a cool I- cool idea. Like if you do that every show too, you bring it back at the beginning of the show in the morning, you know, pass it pass around the show all Saturday right. and then adds uh, extra. Yeah, it was cool. I liked it. It was that was for all the other nice things he he did this trip, like so yeah, I guess the hotel because he got the hotel room. He's like, I got a hotel room, you'll stay in it. <laughs> so yeah. <it's> like, <laughs> and it was the one with the walls. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So, so I didn't know this, but you went. Uh, you must have flown out to the Reptarium. Yeah, flew to Detroit. And then drove with those guys out here. Yeah. Okay, cool. I didn't know that. It was that last was minute cool. detour. Yeah, that's fun. That's pretty cool. How are things looking over at the Reptarium? I haven't been in a while. Um, it's looking good. It's looking yeah. nice. He didn't Brian. have any mammals when I was there last. Now he's got a few of them. Yeah, he's got a sloth, the armadillo, brillo the, brillo the armadillo. Really cool, really cute. Uh, we went across the street and he's about to expand. Like he was planning to ex- do a third expansion, you know, cause he's done the second expansion. I saw plans to like expand that place. Right. And make but the back, the front and everything, but, but that didn't work out. They're not doing that anymore. They're, yeah, they're going to build up on the existing spot, but they ended up getting the spot across the street, which is like pretty big. It was like basically an old grocery store that was also then a thrift store. So it's like Whoa. that size, like grocery store size, wow. a pretty decent size one. And they're going to do, a whole like they're gonna have a second part of the reptarium over there. So the the, the original reptarium, I mean, these plans might change, but the, they should totally tunnel the existing. There's gonna be a oh, tunnel under the ground. Yeah, with like a that cave <laughs> inverts I, thing. I don't know, about Brian Barczyk, if you're listening, you should tunnel under the road. <laughs> if you go deep enough, they won't care. I think maybe put a bridge across the street, across the road, and no, then like have I sharks want, I want swimming. Like the scorpions under black lights. Yeah, you know, like I don't, I'm pretty sure there's like a sewer under there and stuff. Yeah, he could do the aquarium. He could have the deep sea fish down there. You just go further than the sewer. Elon <laughs> Musk says you can go infinitely deep. So. <laughs> anyway, the space is big, and they're they're supposed to start like um, a demo like next week I think on it yeah. and you're going to have like a secondary reptarium over there and also an aquarium with like a, a stingray tank that you can swim with the stingrays Brian Bartek makes me feel like less of a man I don't know how he keeps doing these things I try to do like little things like and now I'll get all new cages for the snakes and I'm like oh gosh that crushed me for a year <laughs> no <laughs> it's, I mean? it's true the longer you sit with him like I mean I, was, I only was with him for like 48 hours or 36 hours and there's always something else that he's got in the works yeah the longer you people, sit i mean people accuse me of being bad of that 
And then, then I sit with Brian. And I'm also like, yeah, I should probably relax and slow down comparatively. Then I hang out with Brian. I'm like, man, I got to get my butt in gear. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's funny because I, <laughs> I don't feel that at all when I'm with him. I feel like, Brian, let's chill a little bit. Let's oh, <laughs> yeah. But that's for him, though. That's like charity for him because he but needs it. But true. But it also makes me like I was reading this, this when I was sitting with him. I was like. I was like, I'm just, you know, I don't, I'm glad that I, or not glad, but I was like, I, I can appreciate like your drive and, and that and everything that you're doing and, and how that works and, and the success that's coming from and all the awesome things he's doing. But I feel pretty awesome about the way I'm doing things too, yeah. <laughs> which is nice. I've always told you I was jealous of you. <laughs> My problem is I'm in the middle. <laughs> if I was at either end of the extreme, I'd be better off. Oh, so you want to see, Have you checked out this is yet? It's good. I like it. What's the what's the proof on it? Is it is well, it's, it's feels cast strength. So it's got, it feels, oh yeah, that's it why. Feels like one fifteen or something. Yeah, it's a it's a cast strength for sure. It's Start little, off with the hot stuff tonight. It's a little young. I feel like this could spend a little more time in the barrel. It's a little grainy, honestly. I'm. It's I'm, a it's a made. It's like a four grain. I mean, that's kind of the thing. Well, it's a four grain. Just meaning that it has. So your standard bourbon generally has corn. Uh, Barley and rye. Yeah. That's the standard one. That's like the classic recipe. And then this adds you wheat. got weeded bourbons, which they replaced the rye with wheat. Oh, and this adds back This in has the rye. rye and wheat. Yeah, I got you. And barley. So it's <laughs> four grain. And it is 157.7. That's uh, 115.4. That's good. I like it. It's not bad. It's definitely not bad. I'm just super bougie. Man. I'm into it. And I just really... Oh, I gotta, thanks for bringing me that Eagle Rare, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got all excited and they went, oh. I did know. bring it initially for you and then realized that maybe it would be fun for you to bid on it at the auction. Yeah, but alcohol, I can't afford alcohol at the U.S. Arc auctions. <laughs> Sometimes you can. That bottle of... Uh, well, I won a bunch of alcohol. I never... I never know that I'm winning alcohol. I'm always bidding on an item and wondering why it goes so high. And I'm like, oh, dang, they attached a bottle to this. Well, they did that a lot at this auction. Yeah. They attached a lot of uh, things. There was a lot of alcohol donated. I went in there. I went in the room. I I got literally, they were just, I got, I think, two baskets full of bottles. Right. And cigars. And and I wasn't even bidding on those. (laughs) So they're giving baskets of, of whiskey They literally bottles. had so much alcohol donated that, yeah, they were just a, attaching bottles and stuff to yeah. other items. Yeah. The only good thing is, like, uh, most of us at the shop like whiskey, except for Thomas, who likes uh, tequila. And that's all I want. So that's good. Because we don't have any real, like, vodka drinkers or anything. Oh, tequila. Yeah. Thomas still likes it. Hmm. Uh, <sighs> feels good. It does feel good to be back in person hanging out after yeah. uh, this. This is episode even though it's nothing like the setup it's reminding me of the tinley that i got roofied at or whatever we're hanging afterwards and we're all tired yeah no all these neighborhoods have a similar <laughs> feel to house like this feels like the first house that we were in at tinley it, just like the way that the there's this room over here and then the kitchen there and another room on the other side of the kitchen over there that whole feel you know and then a stairway going up there yeah, and kind of similar layouts yeah do you want to know it's creepy um, this this is the one that we stayed at the Tinley that never was I always call it where we literally drove our whole crew up here for a big Tinley weekend and then they canceled last minute. Just that title, yeah, it makes it sound creepy. The Tinley that never was. The Tinley that never was. We brought a whole crew up here, and um, we had a gal. We actually filmed an episode for it on Reach Out Reptiles, and everyone thought it was either Kim or my wife. They, like, I don't think people at the time had seen Ashley or Kimberly enough on her channel to, like, recognize her. Just like, oh, girl with curly hair. We had another girl with curly hair that worked for us, Tori, who it, who passed away shortly after that. So it's kind of weird because we came up here for Tinley with my wife. My family was there. Kim was here. Tori was here. Um, and several other people, Richard Bilbo and and stuff like that. And we were hanging out here. Um, that's when Aiden came. They did like a GoFundMe for Aiden because he'd got run over by a car and never got to go to Tinley. And people paid for him to come to Tinley and then Tinley got canceled because of COVID the very first time. But anyway, there's a lot of memories hanging out with Tori and stuff mm. like that all around the house. So it's kind of like, dang, yeah, that sucks. So yeah. She was like 24. Man, all right. It's good times. 
<laughs> that was a yeah, put a damper on the podcast there. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I, I have a buddy that once uh, tried to commit suicide, and it, you, I mean, if we're gonna just take it to this level. <laughs> Well, apparently you got to one up me. It's no, I'm not trying worse. to one up you. It's just like one now, now I'm thinking of bad stuff. Yeah. <laughs> My carampa died. <laughs> I had a snake die in the bag the other day. I, I do a um, I've I've my go-to method when a snake has a bad stuck shed is just put them in a snake bag and get it wet. And okay, yeah, you, that's worked. Seems normal. I don't normal. I don't think that's a common thing, but it seems no, it's like not a common thing to put them in a normal. snake bag and get it wet. I hadn't heard of it before, mm. but anyway. Anyway, I've done it for years. <laughs> yeah. You know, like years, and it always, that's just like kind of my go-to technique, and now I have to question it because I, I did that with a corn snake, and maybe it was because it was a corn snake. I don't know because I've usually do it with pythons. I don't know why a corn snake would make a difference, mm. but it died <laughs> in the bag, in the wet bag. I mean, you're not soaking the bag in water. You're just dipping it in water and setting it out, and it's got some texture so they can rub on it. That's I mean, yeah, well, I'll, like, put, like, some of the bag in the water so that, like, mostly just so that, it, like, feeds the water to the bag, and maybe that was the problem. I don't know, but wow, I was just like, you know, you come, <laughs> you know the feeling. You know the feeling. You just no, come down, you terrible. open a bag, and it's just like, or, uh, you know, like, giving it, you know, CPR, like, trying to resuscitate it, and it's just, like, nothing, just limp, limp noodle suckage. Sucks. Well, if it makes you feel, here's a little bit happier one, but did you see the video? It's been a little while now, but I brought that ball python back to life that drowned from soaking from a stuck shed. Really? Yeah, baby ball python. It was gifted to my daughter, Kira. Wait, you made a video on this? Yeah, it's on, uh, well, I have a, there's like a reel for it. I don't know. Here, let me oh, it wasn't on the vlog channel? Right? Oh, I don't have my phone. <laughs> my phone's <laughs> recording. Uh no, I don't think it ever made it into video, but it's our, it's on a reel on our Instagram. Oh, okay. But basically, we just put a very tiny amount of water, didn't even cover the snake's back, in a tub and pushed her in. Came back the next day, it was upside down, dead in the water, like with its whole face underwater. And I was like, no, this snake is not allowed to die. This is Kira's snake. My daughter's like very sensitive about that stuff, and she had a couple pets die. She lost her scorpion. And then she had lost a corn snake. And then she was gifted a ball python because the corn snake died and she was so broke up about it. And now the ball python was dead. So I was like, not allowed, not okay. So I went and everyone's like, Garrett, it's dead. And it was completely limp, but it wasn't like rigor mortis or anything. So I took it by the tail and I kind of swung it around a little bit to, for the centrifugal force to like pull water out of the lungs, which it was. It was like sprinkling water everywhere, and bleh, you know? And then I pumped its chest where its heart was, and I was telling someone, give me some aquarium tubing. So they brought some, and I cut a little chunk off, and I used it to prop the mouth open. And aquarium tubing is thicker than the, the uh, hole that they breathe out of. I'm blanking on the name of it, but anyways. Glottis. The, yeah, the glottis or whatever. And uh, so I just kind of pointed it at it and went, <laughs> you know. And w was, you know, blasting air a little bit into its lungs to inflate them. And, and then it just went, <laughs> and we're like, it's going to live. So I literally was doing chest pump, blowing in, into its mouth and everything like that. And brought the thing, uh, you know, quote unquote, back to life. And that, that was like six months ago. The snake's fine now. Wow. And it was like, I mean, we were like swinging around water coming out of its, you know, Everyone in the shop was looking at me like, how did you know how to do that? And I was like, it's not my first time. <laughs> but I usually end up doing it with turtles. You'd be surprised how often aquatic turtles drown. <laughs> wow. But, have you swung a turtle around to get water out of it before? Or yeah, just well, jokes? actually, no, yeah, I have. Um, turtles, interestingly, like, you know, our chests uh, expand and contract to breathe, but the turtles can't do that. So they have a shell. So I read somewhere that the way that they you know, compress their lungs is to pull their feet inside. So when you're, when you're trying to pump a turtle, you grab its little back feet and you squeeze them in and out and you like push their little legs in and they go, and the water comes out. And then so you can expand and contract their lungs that way. So you pump their little back legs, flip them upside down, hang them head down and pump the back legs. Wow. You don't like it that much. You just poured it back in the bottle, Brian. 
Well, I just don't like it that much. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, I like this one. It's not. I'm not saying it's bad. This I'm one's saying, going home with me. Okay, there's a couple of factors going on here. Okay, I technically do. I was doing sober October, so I was making a little exception for Tinley. Okay, because people get all like weird about that, and I just didn't want to make people feel weird. <laughs> doing it for other people, um, and so I'm kind of wanting to make it count, you know, if I'm going to drink a little bit of whiskey during Sober October. But, and also, we had that uh, Asian food just before this, and I had, like, yes. musaman curry and, like, uh, yeah. Thai iced tea, so there might be something like that happening. But <laughs> this is a good, perfect opportunity to bring up the fact that we actually have a second drink sponsor this episode. Mr. James Green uh, brought three bottles for us to try, if we would so choose. And James has definitely also sponsored this show multiple times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, he's a bit of a connoisseur. Yeah, and he always, he brings, he's definitely a connoisseur and brings like lots of good, interesting stuff. And so it's tough to, you know, live up to. Jason, it's all right. He's got me hooked on this brand of cigars now. They're like, uh, they, they're like Swisher Sweets for grown ups, is the best <laughs> way I can put it. What are they called? Deadwood? Oh, yeah, Rose? I have one. I brought one for you, actually. Yeah, I brought, I, brought you, I brought you a leather rose too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like them. Yeah, it's, I'm down. Yes, yeah, like uh, it's like uh, pipe tobacco made into a cigar. Kind well, of that thing. probably why I like it because I used to smoke a tobacco pipe, mm-hmm. and when I was a kid, you know, Swisher Sweets gas station cigars when you're 18 years old is like the jam, right? So, so we got multiple options here. We got the ba- new Basil Hayden with the red wine cask finish. Uh, which could be pretty interesting. They're actually all all finished. Uh, no, they're not all finished. I'm sorry. Two of them are finished. The other two are actually barrel picks from a group called the Bourbon Junkies. That oh, that's another podcast. Yeah, it's a YouTube channel. P- really successful. How do they YouTube compare channel. to Whiskey Wimps, though? I mean, I feel. I like... mean, they they pretty much blow us out of the water. Oh, as okay. far as like how big they are. I mean, they've been doing it f- for a, a while, and they have like <laughs> events and like they do barrel picks, and they're about to like release their own brand of whiskey and oh, really? spirit company. And wow, are you and Matt ever gonna get there? Make your own whiskey? I don't know. That's pretty. I'd cool. like. To, I mean, it would be cool, but you know, you have to kind of know a little bit, thing or two about. Like Matt came into, into the channel. Put your name on someone else's whiskey. product. Just do the Costco thing. <laughs> Kirkland brand. We went. We, Matt and I went to um, Kentucky earlier this year to go to an See, event. They were, they were guests at the legit. event. Yeah, but they were the get. They were like featured guests at the event. The yeah. Events. So you had to pay to go there, and they paid. They were paid to be there. Exactly. But oh, they ha- they do make good picks. They're they're entertaining to watch, and they do a good job. They they know what they're talking about with whiskey, and they they make some good picks. And actually, some of my favorite whiskeys I've ever had were picks for them. And so this other, they've got two here, and they're claiming that this one is like William Larue Weller Jr., which is one of my favorite whiskeys of all time. William Larue Weller, mm-hmm. and because it's a weeded bourbon, and they picked it. this Indiana um, whiskey Starlight is is really good. Uh, all the things I've had from this distillery are, are great. And then they've got another one over there. It's a rye port finish port wine finish which is uh they're comparing to midsummer night's dram which we've had before scott yep. bolter yeah yeah I got remember. Us, yeah midsummer night's dram i think that was one of the first i think that might have been the first podcast we did because you came i built the table you came out to the house and scott had made the glasses for us that yeah that was super cool i don't think that was the first one though i i think we got those glasses a few in mm. but i do remember the time you're it's possible about. yeah oh the first one was probably at Tinley, would that make sense? Probably. Wait, what was the first one? The second one was at uh, when we did it at Steve's, my my um, father-in-law's garage. That was number two. What the first it? one might have been at my house with, with, with Jason Bigler's, yeah. You think so? I think it might have been. All right. We'll go with that for now. No I think you actually came to Pittsburgh. We recorded one, and then, no, that doesn't make sense. I lied. Okay. Because I was thinking, then we went to the show, but the show was in California for the second <laughs> one, so that doesn't make any sense at all. And the second one was after the show. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's try this William Lou Willard one. I, or are you still working on that? Over yeah, there? go ahead. I'm sorry about that. Go for it. Oh, yeah, that's nice. So. You're turning this into a whiskey show, Brian. I'm not trying to. We have a drink sponsor. We have multiple drink sponsors, and so we need oh. to sample the drinks. Well, give me some highlights from the show. Okay. Um, well, first I mean, of all, overall, the show was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Give me some highlights from the show. Well, well first of all, I figured I should, <laughs> before I should you provide say <laughs> context so that you could highlight it. Okay, thanks. I first. thought it was a huge show. It was packed, and there was a, a great, you know, high energy vibe. Oh yeah, absolutely. And but I mean, there's always kind of been a, every time I've been to Tinley, there's been a high energy vibe. 
Like there's been something special about the way the vibe is at Tinley for me every time, before and after being a believer. Like it's just been the, the first time I went to Tinley, halfway through, the very first time, halfway through Saturday, I made a life decision that I was going to come back every October. Yeah. Because it was that cool. That was yeah. the first time we met. Yeah, I know. And, and that one did have that kind of a vibe, but it's almost not been that way ever since. Mm. Um, because they, they like dipped down a little bit and then COVID just, you know, mm. shut it down for yeah, a while. Yeah, COVID was a whole different. And then they did do it last year, but it was kind of people just sort of like coming back out of that COVID quarantine slumber. I think we were all just a bit sleepy, whatever the case may be. The but this was are, like I was also at pretty it. small, especially that front aisle that runs along the front wall of the building. I was realizing that you can only basically have two people wide going through there. So you got people trying to stop and look at the the actual booths that are along that. My, that my row. booth is on that aisle. Yeah, so and I so like you, you, you can fit, barely fit two people walking side by side going one direction or the other, and then you got people stopping to look at booths, and you're basically like shuffling yeah. through that space. So it makes it feel very crowded. <laughs> yeah, it does. Um, but there was. You know, decent people like the line was i didn't go check out the line before it went in but yeah there was definitely high energy and plenty of vendors um less space in the aisles and the auction room the my favorite thing about like as far as the many amount of people like the auction room was packed like standing room only they did basically. like double the amount of tables too which was nice yeah more people got to chill at the tables right and uh it was i mean i don't know what the record is for a u.s arc auction this one had to be close as far as like the amount of it's close. I think it was one sixty seven is was the, the number that pops one? in my head for record. I could be wrong, but that's just what I'm recalling. So that that was a highlight. I mean, uh, presenting Phil this with one a, was one forty. Yeah, the, for the, US Arc only, and then there was more money raised for a couple tell, other charities. That yeah, they did. Uh, yeah, there was definitely. Uh, it was awesome in that respect. I mean, you know, a special moment for recognizing Phil and all his hard work with US Arc and. And presenting that stuff, and there were a lot of people. There's some items. A lot of items went for a really decent amount, and uh, it, it just felt. Chad really Brown, cool. Shipyard Reptiles, getting kept against himself, himself by a thousand dollars at a time, <laughs> until he paid twenty grand for an Xbox. That may have been. That's the largest single bid I've witnessed yet at a show. I know there was like some pair of uh, leopard geckos, a Tinley that I had before I ever came to Tinley. I remember watching a video of it. Like went for like over 10k or something um just because people kept bidding back and forth i don't know what the highest bid item single I don't item know is either. that's pretty I'm, high i'm interested that is high but but honestly like they get up over 10 regularly and they got up over 10 several other times that night true yeah there's a couple things that went for like 11 or yeah yeah did you, did you see me win those posters at the end? I did not think. I was just like, let's get started. And then yeah. I just died. And I was yeah. like, wow, I'm intimidating people. No one wants to bid against me. <laughs> they had like a printed US Arc banner. I think they had just five of them. It was just a logo. And before, an item before. And it went for over 10 grand. Right. And that stuff usually does. Because it's people just showing their support. It's not right. that the banner's worth 10 grand. So then they did what I thought was way cooler, 17 of these vertical posters that say U.S. Arc, and then it gives a little spiel about, you know, kind of fights for your rights thing. And then they have like a really beautiful, high-quality reptile photo on the bottom, all different kinds of reptiles. Yep. And there were 17 of them. I think that was also an intimidating fact. Be like, what am I going to do with all those banners? <laughs> I, I got a big empty shop. It's going to be perfect. <laughs> yeah. I can just put them down one hallway. Yeah, you definitely like got a deal on those compared US to how much, land. how much other banners go for. You got the, uh, the I discount. I went over 550 bucks. <laughs> I was like, I don't think you could get these printed for that much. <laughs> right. <now>. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was great. But it was just a good, I mean, to say there was highlights, I mean... There were a lot of them, you know, just for me personally. I'm talking about ex experiences and conversations with people around the show. Mm -hmm. you know, there, were, there were just a lot of really, really good moments, a lot of really good one-on-one -on -one conversations that, that really got, uh, you know, just call them deep wouldn't be wrong, but... Didn't you try to highlight that in a video, at least at the auction? What you did I a video, you told me you are doing a video where you're like, I just want to catch, like, all the cool little interactions people have. Mm-hmm. And I caught, I've caught a few. You know, there was a couple of things at, at the auction. You know, yeah, I just filmed at just the auction. I didn't film. I was doing interviews around the show for Triple B TV during the yeah. show. But the auction, I was just I wanted to catch some cool moments. And there might have been a couple, you know, but there's, because there's always stuff happening around. And I, it's a little bit more of a, these conversations are not the same as the moments at the auction. Like the moments at the auction are like debaucherous, kind of like 
silly moments that are yeah. that's the majority of the moments at the auction. Sure. Um, now there's a lot of heartfelt ones. Well, too. yeah. I mean, the thing presenting for Phil, and there, there's definitely, I mean, but comparatively speaking, for me personally, the amount of conversations I have with people throughout the show compared to the different moments that I would have captured at the auction is comparatively they're more debaucherous at the auction. <laughs> <laughs> True. So you you got a lot of interviews. You say what what's when what was just like a good one that I should watch out for? Oh man, um, jeez, the one with Bionic Benny is pretty cool. Really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, that one's that one's pretty good. Like his story and and how like basically becoming you know quote unquote disabled has somehow enabled him to follow his dreams more. Yeah. Uh, and he's almost more abled rather than disabled because of his disability. That from the, you know the horrendous car accident. From a car accident. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's cool. He's a good guy. Yeah, that was that was a yeah. good one for sure. He was hanging out here last night actually. Mm. Oh, cool. He's like, is this what? Uh, I feel bad for him. Him and uh, and a couple other people like Theron Lance and his buddies and stuff came over with us. I think just because I'm like approachable or whatever. So we're at our at my Airbnb right now for my staff, and so. Um, after the auction last night, they all came over here to like, oh yeah, I've heard about Tinley. It's pretty epic, crazy parties, all this stuff. Everybody came over here. What I did, I I got a haircut in my booth during the show from uh, Nathan. from Nathan Katz, yeah. And so my head was all itchy. So we came in. I ran upstairs, hosed off, put my pajamas on, came back down, and we just sat here. You've been at my house before. This is the old man house. I was like, shh, nobody talk too loud. <laughs> I'm in my pajamas now. They were and looking- everyone was like sitting around waiting for some party to happen because they've heard rumors of Dinley. And I didn't know that's what they were doing. I was like, why are so many people in my staff house? Because people like Dave Kaufman has made parties at my house before mm-hmm. and things like that. So I think they were expecting something to happen. And I was like, I'm just going to go to bed early. I got work to do tomorrow. <laughs> so everyone's like, ah, uh, so is this pretty much Tinley at the end of the night? Like, <laughs> are you guys, do you guys do anything besides this? And I was like, oh, Wait, who, you guys who, who, went who, to the wrong house. I was who, like, no, we don't do anything else besides this. You guys, should, oh, Blake was there too. Blake and his buddy Larry were all over it. And they were all just waiting for things to happen. Did you come that night? When like, I think it was the first time, yeah, it was the first time Miguel came to Tinley. We went out with like Lindy and Freedom Breeder Crew, and no, I no, remember. Oh, the we stories. had you had dinner. We had dinner with us that night though at Tinfish. Yeah, before and we... then I went to bed, and you guys all and I came back here and got my PJs on and went to bed early. Okay, as I do. Right, and then while all of you guys, not you guys figuratively, like as in everyone else that vends, stroll back into their booth at twelve thirty or one o'clock oh. the next day. Oh yeah, that might have happened. I took all the money from everybody that was looking for pets because <laughs> I got up early, had a cup of coffee, and went to work. Well, that was one exception, I would say. A lot, of, a lot of the other times that I went out and got buck wild and stayed up till the wee hours in the morning, I still came back. I'd get up at 7 o'clock, do push-ups, and be like, I'm going to go knock I'm out 10. I'm not saying that you do that. No. I'm saying that the other people who try to keep up with you that night don't come in till 2 o'clock in the afternoon the okay. next day. That, okay, okay. <laughs> so, but anyway, yeah, I was like, well, if you guys want to go with that crowd, you have to go to the Bananas Bar after, like, the bar that's in the yeah. hotel and then just see what happens from there. Right. There's a lot of partying that happens right there or in the parking lot. Yeah. But then other people split up and do crazy stuff from mm-hmm. there. I was like, if you follow Garrett Hartle, you'll be in bed by 930. <laughs> Man, I, had, I was having a little bit of flashbacks to the, that that night after that tin fish. I remember Jesse was trying to talk Ashley into coming out to the club with him. <laughs> oh, yeah. My wife was like, boy, that was that would be five years ago. Because Finley was born in November. So my wife was literally eight months pregnant. And Jesse was like, let's go to a strip club. <laughs> and and uh, Ashley loves Jesse, especially back then. That's when you guys just started the Freedom Breeder channel. He was super awkward. And it was like very endearing to her. So, um, But yeah, they the Freedom Breeder crew, as you know, super generous, awesome people. Invited us to come to dinner and everything like that. They always do this. And I always feel bad because people take advantage of them, follow them around and eat all their money away and stuff all the time. But, you know, we always like to chip in real big and help pay for the crowd and all that. But, uh, yeah, Jesse came out. I guess a bunch of them were going to a strip club afterwards. And, and Jesse and his wife were there. 
And so she was there trying to, and her and Ashley, you know, hit it off. And so she was there trying to convince Ashley too, like, yeah, you should come. And like, I've never been to a strip club. You know, Ashley's certainly never been to a strip club and she's eight months pregnant. And so Jesse and his wife start telling us about, um, I'm spacing his wife's name. Was it sure? Uh, Chelly. Chelly. Thank you. Sorry, Chelly. Um, but, uh, yeah, so Chelly is telling her, like, no, I was, like, six months pregnant the last time I went, and the girls are so sweet. <laughs> and Ashley's, like, flattered that she would be asking, but also at the same time, like, that's the last thing I want to do right now. <laughs> that was a pretty fun little scenario to see my I, wife like that. I didn't know it until, like, later in the year, but that was, I guess, the first time that Lindy had drank in, like, five years until yeah, that night. I heard about that. And he was just... <laughs> Just a, snockered. Just a. Didn't he almost get arrested? No, he got kicked no, out. No, that of, was a different night. Got kicked out of a bar. No, this or might have club. been a different time. No, maybe it was at that time. No, this is a different okay. time. I think. Okay. Anyway, the, I wasn't there. Didn't you get pulled up on a stage at a club or something? I did, and then, and I, then you were mad at the girls because you're like, I do not want to dance. Well, no, they're trying to take my clothes off, and I was like, don't. I was like, nobody you, takes my clothes off take, except for me. You take your you take your clothes off and get paid for it. No, Why I should did I get do mine I did, for free. I almost got into, yeah. I was gonna get kicked out because I was well because they were like trying to they were trying to like, you know, like assault me basically, and so I was I'm not gonna just let somebody. I don't care if you're a girl. Like I'm gonna defend myself. So you pushed them off stage. No, not off first. stage. It's just like oh. just like yeah, you should like have. get away. That would have been funny. That would have been a vlog to watch. I've been, I've had a moment like that before. We were playing at this uh, North Shore show um, back in the day. Uh, Kaukona Palooza was called uh, up in, on Oahu, and we're you know it's a festival, whatever. Like it's basically like a Lollapalooza type of situation. They had dug like this huge, like eight foot deep mud pit, turned it into like a like a mud pit wrestling mud pit. It was huge. They used like mm-hmm. a backhoe, like a thin tractor, and dug out this huge mud pit. And after we were done playing, they were like, came up on the mic, we were looking for somebody to, we need one guy to get in here and wrestle these girls. And my bass player was like, our drummer will do it. Our drummer will do it. And I was like, I will? <laughs> <laughs> and then next thing I know, I'm in this pit. <laughs> and they give us, they pass around this like huge bottle of vodka or whatever, and everybody like pounds it before this wrestling match. And the, the, the point is like, whoever has their clothes on, uh, last is the winner. And oh, I, okay. We're on like bathing suits, Hawaii, you know. And so three girls are trying to take off my board shorts at the same time in this mud pit. <laughs> and I was just like, uh, Start it's throwing not punches. Happening. No, I didn't throw any punches. <laughs> my my lead singer, who was very honest with me about like how he views me and stuff, he's like, you were really tasteful about all that. <laughs> like I I just you know and and one of the girls like begged me to like make sure I don't take off her bottom. So I was like, yeah, don't worry, I'm not. I'm, you know, I'm not trying to. Like I don't even really want to be here either. <laughs> but it is. It was fun and it was exciting. And uh, my point is, nobody takes off my clothes except for me. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And I, and I will defend myself. I don't care who you are. <laughs> uh, there was, was a guy that. that was just, he was like a buddy down the street. <laughs> I was a kid, but I remember this. They used to have, get drunk and have parties and all this stuff. And this guy was in his house. His wife was there and everything. And one of the guests, it was like a girl or whatever, was trying to kind of like pick up on him. So she like reached over and tried to touch his crotch. And he grabbed her hand. He broke all her fingers. <laughs> she bent them back. She's like, woo! And she had to go to the hospital and everything. And... Everyone's coming and and uh, he's like, yeah, she tried to touch my junk, so I broke her fingers. He's like, she probably won't try to do that again. <laughs> he's like telling the amb- ambulance or whatever is taking to the hospital because everyone's drunk. I'm like, don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. ladies. No, it, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like, what would happen if I tried to take girls' clothes off? You know, without their. I consent. would hope she would break your fingers at yeah, least. Yeah, I would like. Yeah, what would the situation be then? There you go. <laughs> I don't know how we get into these tangents on this podcast. Talking about, we were talking about reptile Super shows. Super weird. And how, you know, we, it was the party. They came over to this house to see because I thought it was the party house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was not the party house. No, it's not the I party I broke house. all their fingers and sent them home. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to see you guys that are listening won't be able to hear, but on YouTube you will. This is my favorite item from the auction. Let's see if we can. Is it the right side? Uh, this is the right side. Wait, what are you doing? Trying to show the jersey. There it is, right there. 
<laughs> Steelers number 94 signed by Chad Brown. Yep, number 94, Chad Brown, ship your reptiles. So we have another Brown in, in uh, Pittsburgh, or we did. But uh, And you'll still see some of those Antonio Brown jerseys run around. Um, so I'm going to confuse some people with my Brown jersey with the other number. <laughs> but for years, uh, you know, Chad Brown, I was a fan of him when, you know, back when he was playing for Pittsburgh which was awesome. I was all sad when he went to the Seahawks. I think he went, maybe he went to the Pats and then the Seahawks. I don't remember. But at any rate, when he left the Steelers, I was all sad. And, uh, and then he comes back to the reptile industry to start pro exotics. And back then, I was like, you know, Mr. Reptiles magazine thing. And he had the cool, like, Jamaican colors, which, like, I've got family from Jamaica and everything. So connection there. And... All the reptiles I loved, super dwarfs, blood pythons, water monitors in the best possible way. Plus, like, even cool stuff like Thai bamboo rat snakes. And But anyway, yeah, I was just a huge fan of the company, huge fan of the guy. And it's super weird because, like, now, like, I was just a kid geeking on them, you know. And now, like, they come over to make, make a point to come say hey or take me out to dinner every now and like we're friends, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the, great. I, I love that crew and Susie too. They, yeah, they they always they absolutely hit, hit me up and like say what's that? and they're like anything you can help you with and it, it's been really cool. Yeah, they've been they've been really kind. Yeah, um, yeah, but yeah, I was I was stoked. Susie actually made it happen. She ordered these jerseys, and then you know Chad autographed them for me today. So I got two jerseys at the auction. It was pretty funny too because I'm like the everyone knows I'm a Yenzer. I'm a Pittsburgh boy at at the show. So they're like, we got these Pittsburgh jerseys, and they hold them up, and like the whole room just looks at me like, you have to win these, Garrett. I was trying to be good at the auction. I was trying to be conservative. Yeah, you were pretty conservative, I'd say, but compared to some of the auctions I've seen yet. Yeah, I, I still threw out, but it's maybe half or third of what I normally do. Yeah. But I, I was thinking these were going to go for a lot, so. I was willing to, th- I didn't, didn't have much to throw around this time around because of, you know, personal experiences. <laughs> Not experiences, just car trouble all that all that stuff i didn't have a ton to be thrown over i still was willing to like have this number that i'd still you know basically tithe to us cargo whatever it was yeah and i was, and I was on this one particular bottle i was like okay i'll go up to a certain number and you know it's basically like a thousand bucks it's gonna hurt but i'll i'll do it because it's good whiskey and it's for us arcs so right like, and then it got oh, it quickly and it was like immediately it was like 700 800 i was like oh i didn't even bid yet i, I was like no. that one. then it got up then i started bidding it was basically between uh potter and I, and we were going back and forth for a minute, and then it got to like 1,200, 13, and then Chris Sea Serpents jumped in all of a sudden, and I was like, wait, no. <laughs> like, Brian was like, look at me, like, winked, like he was going to, I don't know what, and I got way like, above the money. Like, ha ha, we beat you. I'm, I'm no, he winked but when it was still low, and we before oh. we even had gotten too high for me when I stopped. But yeah, Chris ended up winning it. Yeah. <laughs> it was Brian and I yep, going back yep. and forth. But I went, I still went above, like, even. For the though, record, Chris won my Eagle Rare, too. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah, he won that off of me. So Dang it. I feel your pain. Yeah, I that was, was a much lower number. <laughs> yeah, no, I got up there. One of them, I was like, like whatever. Uh, it's for U.S. Arc, <laughs> sixteen hundred. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and then it went above that, and I was like, mm, no. That's, that's what happened to me too. I was like, I'm gonna be irresponsible, and then yeah, you just, I don't know. I won. There's a whole room full of junk in there, and I think, I don't know. I, the thing is, like, I, I enjoy bidding against people just to mess with them. Oh, yeah. But every time I jumped in thinking that that was happening, they're like, nah, you can have it. And I was like, oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that's happened to me several times. And I won a ton of stuff that I was like, <laughs> I was not planning on winning that. But, I mean, it's all good. But Yeah, it is all good. But Oops. sometimes it catches me off guard. It felt... I just wanted to spend your money, not mine. <laughs> right. I, I did that with, a pa- like, a chameleon painting that I really was not trying to win. I, was just, I thought it was just getting started. It was going to be one of those paintings that goes to, like, who knows or... what. So I just, like... I bid, I, I bid it like you know I don't know it was eight hundred or something nine hundred yeah. and and it stopped and, and everybody it. stopped I was like wait wait hold on <laughs> and Phil Phil looked down and he's like uh oh Brian's had too much to drink already <laughs> <laughs> Phil is very intuitive he knows what you want and not want to win from up there <laughs> yeah he was laughing at me for a couple of them I won like a cornhole game for Tell Hicks and stuff like that but. Yeah, it's nice that you got a big trailer. You can win stuff like that and just Finally, drive it home. Yeah, I didn't used to, but it is that is nice. 
I need I need to start having like items I need thrown out because actually that was a lot of what I won. Like I I did win like certificates and stuff to companies that I actually use. So I'm like, I'll bid that up to full value because if it's five hundred dollars, I win it for five hundred. That's literally no skin off my back, and it goes to U.S. Art. So. Right. So I won a lot of that stuff actually. Those were the things that they were throwing like baskets of booze in, and I was like, oh, okay. I think this is our largest uh, studio audience to date, I'm just realizing. And they're the most respectful as well. Guys are so quiet. We've had studio audiences before where it's like, can you guys, you guys need, you guys need to leave. Also, Jesse Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> well, Jesse Johnson and then <laughs> other what? people, Blake and. Uh, Blake was, Blake's terrible. Blake, he, <laughs> he was here last night looking for a party too. He didn't find it. Blake's yeah. always looking for a party. It's just the look he has on his face. Yeah, he's the party Blake. <laughs> Yeah, he's a good guy too. Yeah, that was a good one at his place. Yeah, it's fun. You when you cornered him and asked him about Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I did <laughs> that, that to a, I did that to a lot of people this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't gotten tired of that one. You know? I did that to Jason on the drive over here. It was really good, actually. It was really good. Yeah, it was such a, we talked for like three. I mean, we were stuck in the car. Uh, don't tell me about it. That's his personal thing. But yeah, that's. Cool. I just said it was good. I, that's all I can oh, say. It's yeah, good. You, you sounded like you were gonna like go into detail. No, I'm not, I don't need to go into Man, detail. Man, you know, he's having troubles with his wife and <laughs> contemplating no, suicide. He's fine. <laughs> but I told him about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's doing fine. <laughs> he's doing great. Good. That's good. <laughs> there were a lot of signs along the road. <laughs> Some pretty good signs. <laughs> like literal signs and figures. yeah, you know, I I knew exactly what you were saying. <laughs> That's a it's such a funny cliche thing. But when I was like, I'd been shopping for two years for this new facility I bought. I think I've told you this story, but I don't know if I've said it on the podcast. And uh, and we're we're turning to go down the street. I'm just following the GPS. I know it's like a quarter mile down the road. And I was like, all right, God, this might be a little bit cliche, but I need some help here. We've been looking for a facility for like two years, and none of them have been even remotely right. I was considering like major overhauls of places that would be totally wrong for us because we were so desperate. And I was like, if this is the one, just give me some kind of a sign. And then like in front of my building, there's a billboard. And at the time, there was like one of those church-sponsored billboards that you see that was like, keep calm and carry on. I'm with you. Jesus. <laughs> and then as we roll up, the sign moves out of the way, and there's the facility. It's like, oh. <laughs> I was like, that's a pretty good sign. It's like 20 feet across. <laughs> Can't miss that one. That was that was funny. Made Aiden was with me, made him laugh. I was like, well, that's quite a sign, huh? Aiden? He's like, yeah. Uh, I love signs. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is pretty good. Yeah, I, I snorted some just now. That's good. All right. Yeah, it'll clear you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you start snorting that whiskey, man. Man. Hmm. Oh, that's funny. Thanks, James. What's the next big thing for you, huh? Next Cl- big thing for me? Yeah. What's your, uh, <laughs> Brian? A child. Oh, yeah, there's that. It's pretty big. I guess so. Number four, catching up. I'm yep. going to have to go knock up Ashley. Yep. She ain't going to like that. Nope. Well, I mean, she will for a little bit, like two minutes. Two minutes? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I just mean the rest of it. The pregnancy would be bad. <laughs> We're supposed to be done. We're thoroughly traumatized as parents of four. Good luck for you, buddy. Oh, I'm good. <laughs> That's I, I, what we thought, too, until that fourth one came. <laughs> we'll see what happens. You guys know Finley. You've seen the Wild World TV stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's fine. You know, It'll be good, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? Whatever it is, you know, you know what the. It has a boy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought you meant like whatever it is, gender it, as wise. As far as I was like, like, wait a minute, the personality wise, I don't know. Oh, whatever I comes you. along, whatever comes up. Most fine. people would say whatever he is in that circumstance. No, I was thinking about circumstances specific, specifically. Gotcha. Like whatever the circumstance is, it will be fine. Yeah. yeah. You have a you have a name. Uh yeah yeah. Are you gonna spill the beans? Nope. Uh, you're saving that one for your channel, huh? Um, I haven't really thought too far ahead as far as like if I'm actually 100 percent okay with it. I think we're pretty okay. I might make a little tweak here or there. We'll go find you, out later. No, uh, no. Here, let me no see what? if I can. Oh, I don't have my phone. Dang it! I keep wanting to pull my phone out. What do you, what do, you do with the phone? Well, I have a, a note on my phone that says, "Over the course of four pregnancies with name baby name ideas." Mm. Just like, oh, that's cool. And put it down. I don't it's do any funny. of that. I just, Hillary comes up with names, and then I 
say you that have veto good, power. Shoot him down. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So you're like the president signing the bill, but you don't write any of it. Exactly. Gotcha. That's, that's how it's gone every time. Really? With with Noah, with Eli, with Leia. Yeah. You've done pretty good. Yeah. Been all right. Done pretty good. Mm-hmm. Noah Sage, Eli. What? Uh, Steven. Steven. I well, did know that. Well, Noah's, Noah's, middle, Noah's first name is Noah Sage. Oh, what's his middle name? Francis. Oh, I do know that too. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in the deep recesses of my brain. And is Leia Moon? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's her middle name, not her first that's name? That's her middle name, yeah. Okay. That was the that was the sign thing too, because we were driving and we were talking about it, like whether or not we should try for another kid. And we'd always t- kind of t- joked about like if we could have a second kid... That if we if we could guarantee to have like a, another Leia Moon, yeah. it'd be like a no brainer, like easy. Right. Yeah. Just exactly. Cool and and that was always kind of the thing. And yeah, whatever we were, turns out though, you're gonna like it better than that though. And when we were talking about it, we'd been talking about it for when we started talking about that, maybe actually considering that we're gonna have another kid, and we're driving down 101 North and uh, off to the side, like really what we're talking about it, like oh, are we gonna do this? And the huge metal building, like like you said, like kind of like the, your sign, right. just like. Giant, gigantic metal building says Moon the Second. <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know, but it, and I've never seen the building. I drive that highway every day. That's I never funny. saw that before. <laughs> <laughs> and that was gone the next day. I haven't looked, I haven't seen it since. Uh, see, there so maybe it's go. there. I just had never saw it. Do, 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 That's do, weird. Do, I'm gonna have to look for it now. Yeah, you are. That's super creepy. Just like this house. <laughs> yeah. Why did we go full circle back to that? I don't know. Did you that think much. of up? Uh, did you think up? Uh, yeah, diving deep in the shallow end for this episode, or you had a, a like? No, I forgot. Out of whack. Pod- I forgot how to podcast. Oh, I figured that. Yeah, diving deep in the shallow. End. What do you guys think? We do have a studio audience. We could. We could. Studio audience. Phone in for help. So previous questions would be like, when you drop the toast, why does it always land butter side down? Or deep questions like that. Or what is uh the sexiest tree? What is the sexiest tree? What were some other great what were some other Burn. good ones? That was a quick answer. <laughs> <laughs> it was like what what is a nostalgic to or something? Or, that one was almost too deep to start with. So the idea is like you think of a like a pretty shallow topic or question. Just something like Speaking like, of which, now that we've had a little break and we're back into it while you guys think of one, this whole show is kind of about diving deep into the shallow end. Yeah. We originally named this show at, I believe it was Tinley. Well, you were, we were talking about, you, you were, we were discussing like the idea of coming up with what the name would be if we had one. And you said you would want it to at least be searchable as reptiles, whatever and, it was. Yeah, and it was like, that's and I was it. like, that's it. And you were like, no, that's stupid. And I was like, you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but now you've come full circle and you realize that that was a pretty stupid name. It's, I, I only like it because I like you. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't trying to name it that. I know. It was just a thing I said. I know. But so what do you think about renaming the podcast Diving Deep in the Shallow End? I brought that, I mentioned that like several ago. You're like, we can't change it now. <laughs> On the podcast you mentioned? Yeah. Oh. See? Well, I knew that it was your idea. I didn't remember that we had talked about it on the podcast. Mm. So... I'm okay with it. What do you, what do you guys think in the audience? Diving deep in the shallow end—it's kind of what it's all about. So, do you guys have a question for us? Let's hear it. No, I thought all I heard. Right, I, heard Kim, I thought I heard Kim say yes. I have an answer. <laughs> How can answer. you have an answer when there's no question? <laughs> oh, well, oh, we already got we already kid. got a name. Uh, uh, and you, there's enough Jameses in the world. You know, like too. Sing Two. <laughs> yeah, like the movie. Nobody came with a question. You guys don't have one? What is each of your biggest pet peeves? What is we, your I think biggest? We've done that before, but I don't know. Maybe we haven't. No, I, I love so. this one. What I've is got, your biggest pet peeve? I've got two that are almost tied to each other. Oh, wow. Not to each other, I'm but they're like a tie one. for one. which ones are my really big pet peeves. I almost have to ask my wife this question what my biggest pet peeve is. But go ahead. <laughs> I think I'll that would be it. her biggest pet peeve about you. No, like she could tell me mine and I could tell her hers. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can definitely tell you mine and everybody would agree with me. The the first okay. well the first one I'll go with the first one is easy and it's l- less there's less to dig into. But the first one is when people don't put their shopping carts back in <laughs> the, 
the grocery store and they're just like sitting there like literally if i watch somebody like let go of it and just like slowly moves starts rolling towards that's, somebody else's car just like, oh, like yeah that's that's like the yeah. worst part i just see somebody while something i like i don't like it so much and I, don't, I probably don't do this anymore but I, there's definitely times in the past where like I'd see somebody just leave it there, and I'd go grab it so they could see me and, and look at them while I went and put it back. <laughs> Isn't it funny how our pet peeves make us so judgy of people? Yeah, like yeah. pretty badly. So what's your second one? The second one is people that don't know how to use the passing lane as the passing lane. That's a And that's a tough thing. one. It's not just a California thing. I've seen it it's happen in every and, state. Yeah, okay. True. I've seen it happen in every state. Yeah, it's the worst when it's like two lanes, and it's made like that, like slow lane, fast lane, which... For those of you who don't know, the fast lane is on the left. No, stop calling it the fast lane. That's part of the problem. Jason called it the fast lane, and he pre- continued to say complain about it, but then do exactly what he complained about because it's the fast <laughs> lane. So it it's, wouldn't, you, it's, you pass and then you move it's over. It's the passing Reg- lane. Yeah, regardless of how fast you're going. It doesn't matter how fast. I don't care if you're going 120 miles an hour. The if somebody's worst. doing 130, you need to move over. Yes, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. You the, see how worst, I'm, see how I'm getting agitated people, already? It's a real pet peeve. The worst, and I, I deal with this, like I have a really nice drive to work, except it's a two-lane highway. Not a freeway, just a two-lane highway, you know? But two cars will pace, like, exact same speed. You know what I do when that happens? I get in the middle lane between, behind them, flash my brights, and lay on the horn. And wow. just sit with my lights in both their mirrors like, you guys going to sit here all day? That, that is your pet peeve. <laughs> I think it never bothered me that much because I mostly drive a motorcycle. So I would just go whap in between them and freak them out. Yeah, that would that would be convenient. Potentially to my death. <laughs> and they went yikes and swerved towards me. There were I, there were times I daydream about having a little like onboard missile system. <laughs> wow. Just and one that would like just blow them off the road, not like up. You know what I mean? Like going and, like <laughs> and just kind of set them off to the side. <laughs> I think they make like spike strips that do that. And you can shoot out. Like the cop cars have those little spike sh- strips that go mm, and mm. shoot out and take yeah. them out. And it it got worse after spending some time in the the UK and driving around that country and like how they do it like clockwork. Like it's a passing lane. Oh, like, like they're so nobody. Good at it. Yeah, so good at you know, yeah. If you pass somebody and then they immediately get over, just like, like clockwork. This is the even way. even in the city. This is the yeah, I'm just like, oh, wow, is this what it looks like? Do you know what know I don't do like about driving the UK? Driving on the left-hand Congestion side? Congestion tickets. What does that mean? What? No, it's fun to drive on the opposite side. Yeah, that's fun. But what I rented a car. I drove around London, and then I got $900 worth of congestion tickets. Did you drive in a spot you weren't supposed to without the pass? No, what I found out later, I'd never heard of this before, is that if you drive in the city during certain times of day, they just charge you for it. Mm-hmm. Like, they give you, it's like, I mean, it was nine hundred dollars in two days. Nine hundred dollars. What did you do? Just drive day. around the city all day? Yeah, like <laughs> what normal people do. No, you're, just, you're not supposed to drive around the city all day. You park no, your car I just and walk. was going different places and drove around. I had a rental car and drove to places. Okay. For two days, <laughs> and then when I got back to the states, it was like a month later, and uh, the rental car company that I had, because they just like ticket you by plate. Um, had gotten charged nine hundred dollars in fines because apparently cars can't drive on the roads in the day in the city. Not or, that paying or, for it. Why are you making it sound like this is normal? <laughs> this is so stupid. I canceled my card. They chased me down. I end up with like a warrant out or whatever their equivalent of it. There's, is there are signs. London. So I don't know if I'm allowed to go back or not, but I'm going to drive in the city if they do. Mm, that's the worst place not. There was not sign. Well, I, didn't I got kicked out signs. of Mexico. Kicked out of Mexico. Yeah, I got kicked out of Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting kicked out of all the cool places. <laughs> I can go toe to toe with you on these. But no, I, no, I'm saying you're getting kicked out of the places that I wouldn't want to be kicked out of. Well, I didn't want to get kicked out either. <laughs> I was just wanted to drive in the city in my car in the middle of the day. Come on. So here's my pet peeve. Figured it out. Splinters. Hmm. I hate splinters. I get them. They annoy me. But it's not so much that you get a splinter. Like, I mean, that's to be expected. But you know how sometimes you have a splinter and you don't realize it till like, the next so day? You touch something in a certain way and it or, triggers yeah, it. Yeah, or yeah. however you do it or whatever. But then, like, once you become aware of it, it's like, uh, I have to stop everything and get the splinter out. I've literally pulled over on the side of the road to dig splinters out while I was driving. My wife's like, can we keep driving? I was like, if you want to drive because I got to get the splinter out. 
I know it's there now. I want it out. So, yeah, I do not abide splinters. I'm I'm pretty decent to get splitters out. Oh, I, yeah, I am too. I just do not like them in me. Yeah. If you ever get one, I can help you. Thanks, buddy. You got it. Yeah, I'm the splinter removal guy at my house. My my kids are always like, "Don't let mom do it," and she'll be all nice. She'll have like tweezers. I use so a knife. like, "No, mom, you're not." Yeah, I do too. <laughs> you're not good at it. And they go gra- grab my like razor knife out of the utility thing, and they come bring it to me. They're like, "Use a razor on me, dad." Mom tried to get me with the tweezers again. <laughs> my my kids <laughs> like me taking splinters out of them so much. Like Le- Le- Leah will try to. Uh, like invent, like pretend, like act like she has a splinter. Of, just barely thinks she has a splinter. Like, Daddy, I got splintered. Like, <laughs> come here. <laughs> and, <she> just, <laughs> and, it, and it works real well. I mean, I've, I've gotten out many splinters. That's pretty funny. I, I, you dad, know the ones I really don't like when there's like is like one that like gets in real deep and like you have to dig at it and you're like starting to get into the deep tissue. To like, well, the ones that go straight under your fingernails are. Oh yeah, those are pretty fun. But you can see them at least. Yeah, you got a little window, a little mm-hmm. viewing window there. Ooh, that one went way back. <laughs> and then yeah. they're tender forever. You squeeze mm. them, you're like, ow, ow, ow. But they're kind of nice, like, especially they're if you got... kind of nice. Well, no, just that you what can see it. What is wrong with you? Because <laughs> well, you can pull it out. You can see it, like, happy. You can see the entire extraction. You're just like... <laughs> and then you have the whole chunk, especially when it comes out in one piece, which uh, tends to happen man. with under-the-nail splinters. They come out one long piece. Well, they usually like, pressurized from behind with that blood, so like right. you can kind of squeeze on the finger and almost pop them out. Mm. Yeah, like Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> Never really thought of it like that, but sure. His original wooden claws. I guess that be were more like only a quarter t- inch long. <laughs> I guess it'd be more like saber tooth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. <laughs> so that's pretty good. That's not bad. I mean, we've had more in depth. Pet peeve stuff, I guess, but or more in depth, uh, diving deep in the shallow end. Well, stuff. well, my my real question would be, you know, what is a pet peeve? Because everyone gets annoyed by different things, but I think that in our minds, we allow this idea that we can have one thing that annoys us that we act completely irrationally to, and it's okay. You just answer your own question. No, I know. Well, okay, like I know that it is there, but why is it like that? Why do pet peeves exist? Where you're like, normally I have to react, uh, you know, in accordance to what happened. But this is my pet peeve. So like, I'm allowed to act mm, like an idiot and try to missile launch people off the road. So I guess you can, yeah, good point. Uh, so I guess, I guess you can, uh, if you really wanted to like assess somebody's uh, character, you could judge it by how many pet peeves they have. Like, like you like, suck as a person. Like my pet says, peeve. I've got a whole list. <laughs> I miss a launch. Those sons of. <laughs> you got how many pet peeves? <laughs> oh, do the knife click sound again? <laughs> what? You got no, how many pet peeves? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know what that. I'm means. gonna cut somebody. <laughs> I'm gonna cut you. I don't know what that means. My pet peeve is people with too many pet peeves. Mm. They're less than me, so I cut them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, pet peeves, man. That, I got the two, the two, and you know I've actually gotten really good with the second one. I've kind of almost come to complete peace with the the one that's the, the, my real pet peeve because the t- shopping cart one is kind of more of an annoyance. It's like she's really, but the like the the passing lane one, I've gotten legitimately like fur- infuriated over, like yeah. to where I'm like unreasonably uh, angry. But I've made quite a bit of peace with it, I think. And I'm just like, you know what? If there's if it's too crazy to try and pass people, I'm just gonna get in the slow lane. And I'm going to go as slow as these trucks. You know what? This dive deep in the shallow end is working now because I'm having a mind-blown moment. Yes. I'm just realizing why they call it a pet peeve. Do you know why? Because it's why something that so? makes you pissed and it's your little pet and you pet it. And like, this is my thing that pisses me off. Well, yes, but kind <laughs> of. But so like, that's what I'm saying is like, normally, if you have something like this, you would call it a character defect. And you would isolate it and say, this is a bad part of myself that I should improve on. But a pet peeve is like, I like this defect. (laughs) I keep it. It's my precious. (laughs) Exactly. And now we're back to the Lord of the Rings. Sweet. (laughs) That was a good episode. That was a good episode. Is it over already? It was what episode? No, I'm saying the Lord of the Rings episode was a good episode. But yeah, we could be over with this too. (laughs) Cut. You know what my pet peeve is when these things go too long. <laughs> I just don't like the long endings. 
<laughs> Jeez. <laughs> they you're not, what are we, you have an empty glass. What are we doing right now? No, it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, pulling, they're pulling some liberties on calling this William Little Weller Jr. I'm just saying. It's good. Don't get me wrong. It's good. It's good whiskey. But William Little Weller is special. <laughs> <laughs> you're special, mm. Brian. I have poured some myself. <laughs> you been christened. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you next time on, I don't know, Search of Those Reptiles or Diving Deep in the Shallow End. This is maybe one of the shortest ones we've done, which is appropriate since we just cut them short or since we just left them hanging for two months straight. We're going to ease you back in. No, that's probably fair. All right, good. Yeah, thanks, you guys, for tuning in. We'll, we'll be more regular as long as we are together. And we eat our brand. <laughs> Searchable as a reptile.